low, my friend. There are so many things you could spend about $100 on. You could buy that's, or that's, or that's, or that's. Charlotte Tilbury's magic cream? Maybe you're choosing to buy it. Maybe you've always wondered what is in this stuff. They just actually came out with a light version. So we're gonna go over both formulas, talk about how they're the same, how they're, diff they're different, and whether you should actually be purchasing these or if there are some less expensive alternatives that probably work just as well, if not better. If that sounds interesting to you, hang tight. We're getting into it right now. I just wanna let you know, I am not a cosmetic chemist. I am not a dermatologist. I am not a skincare professional. All the information presented in this research was found on professional websites. I also wanna mention before I get started that every once in a while, I do not say things exactly the way that I mean them or I learn new information that I wanna share with you. So if there's anything in this video that falls into that category, it will be placed in a pinned post at the top of the comment section. One thing that's really important to talk about before we get into the ingredients of these products is there really is no way to know looking at the ingredients exactly what something does. We do know that the ingredients are listed in order from concentration. So they start with the highest concentrated ingredient, the thing that's in there the most, and it goes down to the thing that's in there the least, except for when it hits the 1% mark. Once it hits the 1% mark, we really have no idea how much is in it. It could truly be 1% of the product, or it could have been a tablespoon and a batch of 10 gallons. There is literally no way to know. There's also no way to know how these levels are interacting with each other to decide how this is actually going to work on your skin. But the ingredient list does give us a clue. So we can look at this ingredient list and we can look at other ingredient lists and see if we're truly getting our bang for our buck. Second thing before we get started is I want you to take a second and think about what you're looking for in a face cream. Are you looking for hydration? Are you looking for moisture? Are you looking for anti-aging benefits? Are you looking to calm your skin, reduce redness? What are you looking for? What do you want out of a face cream? Because that's going to give you a perspective on what I'm saying that'll be unique to you. Before we talk about the brand new Magic Cream, let's talk about the original. Let's go ahead over to Charlotte's website and we'll see what they say and why this is magic. This is the magic moisturizer that started it all. My award-winning best-selling moisturizer was originally created backstage to prep and transform the look of model skin before fashion shows. Doesn't that sound fantastic? Loved by celebrities and supermodels, the supercharged formula floods your skin with moisture and instantly makes it appear brighter, plumper, and smoother, creating the perfect base for makeup. Then it goes into the statistics. They apparently had a study where the results were observed that 100% of people felt their skin was instantly moisturized. 100% agreed that dull skin was instantly transformed and 98% agreed that skin looked, looked and felt firmer and they claimed that it moisturizes for up to 24 hours. So this study was 100 women tested over four weeks, but that's all the information that I can find about this particular study. But who are these women? Are they relatives of people who work at Charlotte Tilbury? Are they fans of Charlotte Tilbury? Are they people that are in a clinical double-blind study where even the people that are doing the testing have no idea? Is there a placebo? Is What is happening with the study? We just don't know. So always take those studies with a grain of salt when you see those results. So now let's go ahead and talk about what's in this stuff. So the number one ingredient is water, like many, many moisturizers. Then there's a lot of sunscreen ingredients, which is kind of odd. I'm wondering, like I saw Dr. Dre talk about this and I'm wondering the same thing she is, is why didn't they just make a sunscreen? Why I think is because it takes a lot of time and a lot of money to get active ingredients approved in a product. You have to go through a whole process if you're going to call something a sunscreen. And I guess maybe they just didn't want to market it that way, but there are a ton of UVA and UVA be sunscreens in this product, which is fantastic, but it's not advertised as a sunscreen. There's also a humectant ingredient in there called glycerin that is going to pull water into your skin, even the water that's in the base of the product. Then there is an occlusive that's going to seal all of that in to stop it from evaporating from your skin. 
all sounds great. There's also silicones in here that will also work as occlusives to hold everything in. One more thing I want to mention about the sunscreen thing is you never want to use a moisturizer as your main sunscreen because chances are you're probably not applying enough in order to truly protect your skin. And plus, if you're paying $100 a pop for a sunscreen, you don't want to use as much of this as you need in order to get proper sun protection. So just get a regular sunscreen, one that works well for you, and use this as like a bonus sunscreen. That's my opinion. But beyond that, that is all that's in the base of this product. After these ingredients, we get to phenoxyethanol, which is the preservative, which is probably our 1% mark. Now, things under the 1% mark could be doing things as well. Again, there's no way to know what's, what concentration these need to be in in order to be effective, and there's no way to know how much is actually in the product. So I do wanna mention them briefly. There's actually a lot of really good stuff in here beyond the preservatives. So we have moisturizing ingredients, we have antioxidants, we have skin soothing ingredients, we have humectants, we have anti-inflammatory, ingredients and we have some good anti-aging ingredients in here including peptides and we're going to talk about peptides in a little bit it's one of my favorite things to see in skincare but if you look at it as a whole none of those ingredients are in the top portion so what you're really getting in here is a supportive sunscreen and some hydration for your hundred dollars with possibly some other benefits as well but there's just no way to know I also want to mention that there is natural and also artificial fragrance in this product so if you are anti-fragrance, this is going to be a no-go. The next question is, how is this the same and different from the brand new Magic Cream Light? Before we go into the comparison, I just want you to take a look at this lady real quick. Look, look, if this cream makes me feel like that, I am invested. I will pay $100 to feel like that. Holy moly. Inspired by my award-winning Charlotte's Magic Cream, Magic Cream Light is my new, groundbreaking, light as air moisturizer for the appearance of brighter, plumper, smoother, youthful looking skin. Yes, we want this in our lives. Expertly formulated with high performance ingredients, including, I don't even know, rep rep replexum vitamin. This is when they get into the language where it's like, I don't even know if these are real things. I don't, I don't know. So let's go over to where it says, what makes it magic? They've lost me there. Results observed in a clinical study that reveals Charlotte's New Magic Cream Light boosts the appearance of elasticity by 45% in four weeks, reduces the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles by 27% in four weeks, boosts hydration by 183% in just one hour. Let me just say any moisturizer should probably do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not something that is unusual for a moisturizer. It's like supposed to do that. So it's like saying the teacher taught and the children learned. It's amazing. And it's like, no, that's what they're supposed to do. So that's really weird to me. Defends against pollution, UVA, and UVB rays. So when they say defends against pollution, they're saying there's antioxidants in it. And of course, UVA and UVB are sunscreens. Well, what they did was they took a lot of the top ingredients and they just kind of flipped them around and made it a, what I assume to be a lighter formula. I saw Wayne Goss's analysis. He does have both of the products and he said that it does feel much lighter. And he said, if you have oily skin, you'll probably like the light version better than the original because the ori original is a bit heavier. I also happen to really like the packaging of the light better, just like Wayne said, that it's in a pump rather than in a jar. When you have something in jar packaging, depending on the ingredients, when they're exposed to light and air, they start to lose their effectiveness. So a pump without light and air getting into it is a much, much better format for skincare to help it last longer and be more effective longer. But they didn't really add anything in order to make the base of it better. They did add some things underneath the preservative. They kind of change it up a little bit, but overall it's a very similar ingredient list just with things mixed up a bit. So I personally don't see any reason why you would need both of these products for any reason. It would just really be which texture you prefer. <music> So the question is now, 
are there things that may do the same thing, if not better, at a less expensive price? I wanna go ahead and start with a product that I have tried that was sent to me in PR quite a long time ago, and I absolutely love this product. It's my favorite product from this brand. There are some things I don't like from this brand that I think are a little, uh, but this one was my favorite. This is the Derma E Advanced Peptides and Collagen Moisturizer. It's $35, and when we look at the ingredients, we have the water in the top, the glycerin is the humectant, at number two, which is great. And then we have macadamia seed oil at number three, which is good moisture. It's got great fatty acids in it. It's just a great ingredient. There's ingredients in here that will also help prevent moisture loss. So if you have specifically dry skin, you may wanna look at this one instead of the Charlotte Tilbury. Of course, there are the peptides in here. Now peptides, different peptides do different things, but whenever I see peptides, I know I'm gonna be happy with it. I know there isn't a ton of research behind peptides, but I've noticed noticed in my own personal anecdotal skincare <laughs> that my favorite products, the ones that I actually see some plumping of my fine lines, things like that are from products with peptides. Those tend to be my favorites. We also have some plant-derived collagen, which is gonna be a nice moisturizer. We have some vitamin E in here. There's witch hazel in here. Some people like it, some people don't. I could go either way with it, to be honest. There's some horse chestnut seeds extract, green tea, which I absolutely love to see in skincare. That is a, one of my favorite favorite things because there's so much research behind the antioxidant properties in green tea. And then after the preservative, we do have some natural fragrance oil. So again, if you're anti-fragrance, unfortunately this one isn't gonna be for you. But honestly, I would probably choose this one over the Charlotte Tilbury, especially if you have dry skin. Now these next two are ones I haven't tried, but the ingredient lists look legit. I went on Ulta's website and just kind of flipped around and browsed around and found some that I think look amazing. So this one is a great one for anti-aging and also for dehydrated skin. This is the Bliss Anti-Aging Bright Idea Vitamin C plus tripeptide color Collagen Protecting and Brightening Moisturizer. <laughs> Say that five times best. $24 on this one. Again, we have the water and glycerin at the base that's gonna bring that water into the top layers of your skin. Then we have the Caprolic and Caprolic Triglyceride, which is gonna help prevent the moisture loss. Propanadiol also pulls moisture into the skin, but it is also a penetration enhancer. A little further down, we get into some shea butter, which is an excellent moisturizer. We have licorice root extract. Oh my gosh, I love to see that. More peptides, we have ceramide in here. Oh, love to see ceramide in products and you don't need a lot of that in order for that to be effective. There's more vitamin E, there is some niacinamide in here. So if you're sensitive to niacinamide, this one's gonna be a no-go for you. Uh, more green tea, there's also avocado oil in here. So if you're sensitive to that, you do not wanna get this. And unfortunately, way down at the bottom, there is a fragrance in this one as well. But at this price point, it seems to blow the Charlotte Tilbury out of the water. And the last one is very close to fragrance free. There is some lime extract at the very bottom. So you kind of have to decide whether that's okay for you or not. But this one is going to be perfect for skin soothing, moisturizing, and anti-aging. This is the Mad Hippie Face Cream. It's $25.99 at Ulta. This one is gonna be really skin soothing in that the top is water and aloe leaf juice. And also very high up, we have the Matrixyl Synth 6, which is a peptide calm there's safflower seed oil, which is an excellent moisturizer. Then there's glycerin, that's that humectant. It's gonna pull water into the top layers of your skin. We get to some niacinamide, and then another peptide complex. There's reservatrol in here. There is some coconut oil in here, but it, again, it is way low down. So if you're anti-coconut oil, you just have to decide whether that's a no-go for you or not. And then there's coenzyme Q10, which is a fantastic antioxidant. So this one looks amazing as well. Again, so much love lower priced than the Charlotte Tilbury. So if you have not figured it out at this point, I do think the Charlotte Tilbury is extremely overpriced. I don't think that based on the ingredients, it is a magic cream. If you love it, if you enjoy it, it doesn't look terrible. It doesn't look like something I would tell you to avoid, but I do think it looks extremely overpriced for what you get, especially if you look at comparable products at a much lower price point. So at this point, my friend, it is your turn in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness where we help each other to not buy 
by craft makeup or skincare. If you would like to weigh in on the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, I would love to hear your thoughts on either the original or the light version down in the comment section down below. Talk to each other, get to know each other, comment back and forth, be kind to each other, thank each other for their thoughts, uh, and any other moisturizers that you particularly enjoy and why you enjoy them, leave those down below again so we can all learn from you. If you are not already subscribed, don't forget to subscribe before you go, and I'm learning a lot about that notification bell recently. If you want to make sure that you know when I've uploaded, you want to click the notification bell and then make sure it's set to all, because if it's set to, I think it says custom or something, it may or may not tell you when I've uploaded, and a lot of people have been telling me that they're not getting notifications. So make sure you do that and make sure you have it set to all if you are interested in that. If you would like to hang out a little bit longer and watch another video, YouTube should be recommending a video for you right down there to watch, but if it is your time to go, it is no problem at all. I thank you so much for hanging out as long as you did. Mad love to you, and I will see you in a video very, very soon.